Are your AWS, Azure, or Google certifications helping your career or keeping you from getting to your goals? The answer may surprise you. Hi, my name is Michael Gibbs, and I'm the founder and CEO of GoCloud Careers. And I've been helping others get their first tech job or get promoted in tech for more than two decades. And I've also spent about two and a half decades working as an architect, a network architect, an enterprise architect, a business architect, what have you. And in today's video, I want to talk about how to leverage certifications correctly so, because I want you to advance your career. And I also want you to know when it's time to stop pursuing certifications before they hurt your career. Now, certifications can provide a boost to your career, but when used incorrectly, they can damage your brand and keep you from getting to your long-term career goals and the choices to know when and which kind of careers can be helped. So there's realistically three kinds of technology careers we're going to talk about. And they're going to be either basic implementation roles, which typically are the lowest paying roles. We'll talk about the, the harder core engineering roles, which are more related to advanced building, performance optimization, and tuning, which are going to be mid paying roles. And then we're going to get into the high paying roles, which are related to system design and planning, which are really architect roles, like a cloud architect, an enterprise architect, an AI architect role. And certifications have very different utility for all of these roles. Let's begin with implementation roles. Implementation is about building or configuring the technology space. Roles in this space may be called a systems administrator, a cloud administrator, or a network administrator. These are typically technician roles. They're going to be the lowest paying roles in technology. And here, certifications can have a big impact. Because here's what's taught in the certification the name of a service and how to configure that service. And this is a how-to job. And that's exactly what's taught in certification. So for those that desire admin roles, certifications are excellent. And what's also taught in certifications is the name of a service. And if you're going to be a cloud admin setting up virtual machines, you need to know that AWS calls their virtual machine an EC2 instance. So, a certification like the AWS Solutions Architect Associate or potentially even the AWS Solutions Architect Professional is going to be really good and it's going to help someone who wants an admin level role. Now let's talk about the engineering roles, specifically the bigger, harder core, more performance oriented, bigger engineering roles. These roles do involve hands-on building, but they are more complex building because the simple building typically goes to the administrators. The related optimization and performance tuning. Now, optimization requires the engineer to understand how the technology works, as well as how the technology will impact other parts of the technology ecosystem. So, we bring in a couple more servers, how will that impact the network? So, for these deeper engineering roles, it's going to take a combination of very strong hands on skills and knowledge. Now, sadly, most certifications will not provide the deep knowledge that's really needed for our harder core, more sophisticated engineers because certifications are basically geared towards admin roles. Now, there are exceptions. The Cisco Certified Internet Expert is a very hardcore engineering certification and it requires a lot of knowledge. Other certifications that are more on the challenging side that will provide some of the knowledge include things like the CISSP for security, the AWS Solutions Architect Professional, the Azure Solutions Architect Expert. These are low to middle engineering knowledge exams. And for engineers, getting three to five strong certifications is a good thing. But they should spend the rest of their time focusing on how the technology works, which is typically not covered in the certification. Now, how does the engineer learn about the technology? Well, we have to go to the source. So for anything related to the internet, we can go to the Internet Engineering Task Force, RFCs, which are the specifications. For things related to things like Ethernet, we can go to the IEEE specifications. Engineers can go to the vendor, docu vendor documentation, vendor white papers, and they can build some real knowledge of how the systems work, not just how to build them. But for here, we're talking about several certifications. And for the engineers in this world, we want them to get these certifications in their field. The worst thing I see is the 10x AWS certified person. And why do I call it the worst? Because the certifications are in many people's careers. So if you're going to be an engineer 
and you're going to be a cloud engineer building things, it serves little purpose to become, say, a software developer because it's a different job. So make sure when you get certifications, it's in your field, not someone else's for these engineering roles. Now, let's get into the highest paying role, the design and planning roles. And, you know, a CEO is a design and planning role. A chief operating officer is a design and planning role. A cloud architect is a design and planning role. An enterprise architect is a design and planning role. An artificial intelligence architect is a design and planning role. Now, these roles are not hands-on engineering roles. They're also not hands-on building roles. The role of the architect is going to take a combination between people skills, business skills, and tech skills. In fact, I have to retrain people with, say, cloud engineering backgrounds to become architects because it's such a different skill. Now, here we're going to talk about the people skills that are needed, the business skills, and then the tech skills, and then we'll evaluate how and when the certification process can either help or hurt these careers. And it can do both, depending upon how certifications are used. Why does the architect or the system planner need so much people skills? Well, no one hands us a piece of paper that says, go design this. We actually have to ask questions and learn how our client's business operates. So we have to obtain information and that takes soft skills and people skills. Now, when it comes to an architecture, it's never going to be one person that leads the design. It's going to be one person that leads the design and there's going to be a whole lot of system designers there. So we're going to have to lead large teams. So for the architect, the planner, the CEO, the executive leadership is so important. We're going to have to bring out the best in others whether we're in any of these roles, and none of this is taught in certifications. So for the people skills, you're going to need to learn them, but note you can't learn them in certifications. Now, let's talk about the business skills for an architect. People bring in architects like cloud architects, enterprise architects, AI architects, network architects, for us to solve their business problems. So we have to learn about their business, which means we need to understand business. Now, we'll have to have the business skills because we're going to be giving presentations. We're going to be selling our solutions to the client. We're going to be responding to, say, RFIs, requests for information, RFPs, requests for proposals, RFQs, requests for quotes or pricing. We're going to be managing stakeholders. We're going to be managing vendors. We're going to be negotiating. We're going to be building business cases. And guess what? This, too, is not taught in a certification. That's one of the reasons there's no CEO certification. So... Again, you need to learn these, learn these business skills, and they won't be covered in certification. So if you spend too much time focused on certification, you're going to miss the main components of the job, which are the people skills and the business skills. Now let's talk about the system design and planning. Now here, we need to understand the technology, but we need to understand how the technology works, not how to implement it. And for people that have not been architects before, they think they can go build and they can learn it, but you can't. And I'll give you an example in a minute. But understand, when somebody wants an architect to design a shopping mall or a skyscraper, they don't hire a construction crew or expert builders. They hire an architect to design it, and then after the architect designs it, they have another team to build it. Same thing in technology. So, certifications teach the how-to. Now, I'll give you the example to show why how to will not cheat you how systems work. So let's say you use your PC or your Mac every single day. You're typing on your keyboard, you know how to use the mouse, you know how to use the keyboard, you know how to save your information, what have you. Do you really know how your system works? Do you understand what the CPU in your system does? Do you understand how those cores interconnect to each other to perform the calculations necessary for you to do your work? Do you understand that CPU's level one cache, level two cache, level three cache, and how they work? Do you understand how that CPU integrates with the DRAM in your computer? Do you understand how the number of PCI lanes, for example, on your CPU will affect the number of GPUs you can put in that computer, which will affect your ability to do machine learning calculations? And I could go on. That's the kind of planning knowledge and understanding knowledge the architect has, which sadly is just not taught in certifications. Certifications teach the how-to. So think about that. It's not going to be covered in certifications. The other problem with certifications is they tend to bias you. You do five AWS certifications, you fall in love with AWS. You do five Google certifications, you fall in love with Google. The problem is, as architects, we can't afford to be biased. We can't afford to love any vendor. We have to be in love with making our clients successful. So if when we architects get certifications or system planners, we have to be careful not to do too many from the same vendor because we don't want to be biased. Now, admittedly, as you can hear, 
certifications provide limited value for the architect. Now, does that mean you should avoid them? No, but don't overdo them easier because that's where they can damage your actual brand and they can damage your career. And we'll talk about that in a second. So what do I recommend? For the architect or the system designer, maybe get one to three professional level certifications. Good for your brand. And then after that, stop focusing on certifications and focus on the critical components of your career. Because if you're focused on learning other people's jobs, like cloud admin or network admin or sysadmin, and you're designing and planning systems and selling systems, it's not going to help you. And every minute you spend learning somebody else's job, you're not focused on your job, which means you're spreading yourself too thin. You're not going to get any better. Now, the last thing to think about when it comes to certifications for these architect roles and these system planning roles is your brand. When an employer looks for an architect, they're looking for an executive with good leadership roles and good business acumen and good executive presence, communication skills, etc. And they're looking for a certain type of business executive. And when they see 30 and 40 technician level certifications, those junior level certifications, they often don't see the person as an executive. They see that person as a technician. And I can tell you from experience, I've had people that we trained to be architects that we got hired as architects that had a lot of certifications. We had to remove the irrelevant certifications from the resumes in order to get them hired because they weren't being taken seriously as architects. So in this video, we talked about whether your AWS, Azure, or Google certifications, or any certifications for that matter, are helping you. And the case is, in some cases, they're a big boom for your career. In other cases, they're a moderate boom for your career. And in other cases, we can do a little of it to optimize our brand, but we need to focus our training time and our professional development on the skills that make us great at our jobs. If you desire to become a cloud architect or an enterprise architect or an artificial intelligence architect, we have free webinars that will teach you how to build your career. And these webinars are on Zoom. We'll go over the role. We'll answer your questions and have conversations with you. We also have a tremendous number of free documents in the description of this video to help you build your technology career. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. Please subscribe to our channel and hit the bell to be notified of new videos to assist you in your technology career. This is Michael Gibbs signing off for now, and I look forward to seeing you in another video. Take care.